morning, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, today I prepared uh, some information about pruning your bunch grapes. So um, what is the grape production um, situation in Alabama? We have a lot of uh, big number of native grape species, including Muscanania grape that everybody knows about. But also uh, our Alabama Wineries and Grape Growers Association uh, now has 26 wineries and 125 members. And um, the number of wineries has increased by 3.7 fold uh, since 2006. So within the 15 years, we had this uh, huge increase. Also uh, in 2003, Alabama had about 90 acres of muscadine grapes. And in 2012, uh, this census determined that uh, we were growing 519 acres of grapes. And uh, this represents a 5.8-fold uh, increase in acreage uh, covered with grapes. Um, on the other hand, we're having this uh, global uh, interest in wine tourism, and it is reflected in our own agritourism in the state. And uh, we're also having new opportunities like those uh, new farmers markets um, that are um, selling um, also some, some grapes and muscadines, of course. And uh, recent research uh, done on health benefits of um, consumption of grapes is showing a lot of benefits in terms of um, um, a lot of antioxidants, uh, high an antioxidant content in those grapes, including resveratrol, uh, elagic acid, and other compounds that are very um, health beneficial. With that, I uh, just wanted to make some distinctions and uh, summarize the information about grape, uh, which belongs to botanical family of Vitaceae. And um, this um, family has um, a um, 1,000 species, and they belong to 17 genera. Within um, this genera, uh, cultivated grapes of economic importance belong to genus Vitis, which has over 60 species, and those grapes have like 38 somatic chromosomes. The other genus of importance is Moscadinia, but only three species of plants belong to this genus. Um, anyhow, they have 40 somatic chromosomes. What is the difference for us today uh, is that all of uh, Vitis uh, species are producing uh, their crop on clusters and clusters could be harvested. While well, Moscadinia grape, you know very well, they need to be harvested berry by berry uh, when each individual berry uh, ripens. So um, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we're going to address this. Um, and um, let me talk about the plant itself. Uh, grapevine requires some form of support uh, to keep uh, the shoots and the canes off the ground. And in the wild, uh, the tendrils that develop along the canes attach to other vegetation, surrounding vegetation, and allow the vine to grow up off the ground. In intense cultural systems, there is no natural support for the vines. So that's why the use of various trellis systems to train and support the vine is needed. The use of trellis systems also facilitates other management practices in the vineyard. So it's very important to establish those trailing, trailing, trailing systems. I just wanted to go over some uh, definitions to make sure that everybody understands um, what is pruning, what we call pruning, what we call training, and um, go with those terms. So pruning is removal of plant parts to obtain our horticultural objectives. Pruning is used to control the size and the form of the grapevine. Pruning also optimizes the production potential of the grapevine and help us maintain a healthy balance between the vegetative growth and fruiting or our crop load. Training, um, this is the arrangement of plant parts spatially. 
tra training is done to develop a structure that optimizes the utilization of sunlight, also promotes productivity, and adapts to the characteristics of the grape cultivar that we're growing. Training also promotes efficient and sustainable vineyard management practices. So let me look at some grapevine characteristics. Um, what is most important for today's um, message uh, is that uh, our grapes, the dormant buds on one-year-old canes actually give rise to new um, canes on which the grape clusters are produced. And if you look at those pictures, this is one year um, cane and this is one year cane. And you can clearly see one, two buds that are developing here in addition to this basal bud from which we do not expect any clusters to develop, but just the vegetative shoot will develop from this one. And you can see on the next uh, image here that uh, those shoots um, are in early shoot development already, and um, this is where our canopy is going to be formed for this current season, and also our clusters or our crop is going to be uh, born on those shoots in this particular season. So because of this character that grapes produce on one uh, year old case, Pruning mature grapevines consists of replacing all of the fruiting wood each year. So if you ask how often you need to prune those each year. Next, uh, we, we will start addressing uh, the question of how to prune your young grapevines. So grape vines can be trained with a single or double trunk. And um, on this picture, you can see our prominent grower, Randall Wilson, and uh, in his vineyard. And he decided to train uh, those vines to a double trunk, even though this is not very typical training for um, the entire Southeast. But um, um, yeah, training vines to a single trunk is the most common and the simplest method um, to start with. Um, double trunks are usually practiced in uh, colder climates uh, or um, places with marginally adapted cultivars. And uh, the, the goal for this, for this double trunk is to um, probably use one trunk for production in case the other trunk is being injured or killed by the cold. So um, how do we prune our grapevines? According to the cane lane, uh, we can prune like um, in two different systems. And the first system addresses the long cane pruning. It is also called Niffin system. And the second system is known as spur pruning um, to a bilateral cordon system. According to the cordon length, we also have two options. Uh, we're using high cordon, uh, which forms this single or double curtain. And we can use low cordon with uh, vertical shoot positioning um, for another um, bilateral system. What is uh, important to remember today um, about pruning our uh, vine grapes is that from planting, through the third growing season, pruning and training practices are essentially the same for the various training systems. So no matter how, what system you're going to use, uh, the training practices are the same and focus on training your trunk, which is your permanent part of the vine uh, during the first and potentially second season and focuses on training or establishing your cordons during the second and third growing season. So um, I took this picture uh, yesterday in uh, a law store. And I think like um, if you're especially a homeowner and you want to plant um, a grapevine like that, uh, that's how you're going to purchase it. And um, 
um, I'm using this example uh, just to um, illustrate that after planting, uh, you need to cut the one-year-old canes back to three or four buds, and that's what it is. This is our one-year-old cane, and we're having one, two, three buds here, and we're going to obviously train this future vine to a single trunk. Okay, uh, we have planted the vine. Uh, what we do during the first growing season? Our goal, as I already mentioned, is to train the vine up to the desired wire, uh, no matter if it's your uh, top wire for a high cordon being uh, spaced six, foot, um, six feet apart or mid-level wire for a low cordon for vertical shoot positioning. So this manipulation uh, requires uh, going through the vineyard several times during the season and tying up the canes to a supporting stake, like you see this bamboo stake here, to keep uh, the trunk or the future trunk um, growing very vertical. And if or when, like in this case, it already happened, uh, the cane uh, has reached the wire, you can see that we cut it uh, about four inches below the wire. And the goal for this cut was to promote the uh, lateral buds uh, on the cane to begin to grow from which buds we're going to form our future cordons on this top wire. Other things that we need to pay attention during the first growing season um, we need to start removing any flower clusters from the shoots. And this manipulation needs to be in effect for at least two years. Sometimes even in the third season, we're removing or thinning out part of the clusters. Also, we need to develop straight trunk uh, to the desired wire. And this is not a good example of a, string, of a straight trunk right here. But what we have here, and well, that's why I use this picture to show you that our cordons, you can see that we probably cut it here and we have our left and right cordons already growing and um, developing um, the structure of the vine. So we need to allow those cordons to fill in the trellis length during the first growing season when they exist. So. Um, we're having different um, systems based uh, on the cordon height, which I already mentioned. But for the high cordon single curtain system, like the one that is um, illustrated here on this slide, um, we're using this high cordon single curtain to train our trailing uh, cultivars or cultivars with drooping growth habit. You can see that all of those branches were growing downwards. And uh, we have this uh, characteristic uh, growing habit uh, for our American species and many of the French American hybrids that were growing around. And here is the single curtain that is being formed. Uh, this particular picture is from uh, Muscadine uh, Sweet Home, uh, but um, it is um, a good representation of this single curtain form. The second uh, system is the spur prune uh, bilateral cordon used for the vertical shoot positioning uh, type of training. And um, this is a low cordon. You can see it's only 40 inches uh, from the ground. This is our catch wire. And we have like three uh, additional, uh, sorry, this is our crop wire supporting the crop uh, right here and three uh, layers of uh, catch wires. Um, as I mentioned, this is a low cordon uh, which with uh, catch wires, uh, vertical shoot positioning being used for 
plants with upright growing habit. And this growing habit is characteristic for most of the Vitis vinifera and for some of the French American hybrids that are grown around. And this is um, an illustration of vertical shoot positioning trained uh, Vitis vinifera hybrid here in Alabama. You can see that on each uh, cordon, we were trying to form like uh, seven um, spurs and on each spur, uh, we uh, retained up to two buds and we're having this uh, or the, the shoots that are developing this year and the crop or the clusters will be formed on those shoots as well. So, we're here at the first dor dormant pruning and the second growing season now. Uh, I also mentioned a couple of times that we're establishing the trunk, number one task in any vineyard. So in the case, if the, uh, the canes did not reach the desired wire during the first growing season, we need to prune back to healthy wood that is at least three eighths of an inch in diameter or back to two, three buds and start the process of forming the trunk all over again. The selected canes should be tied to a temporary stake to promote the straight trunk. Here uh, is our stake and uh, our cane that is going to become a trunk. And what are the uh, growing season objectives? We need to train the new canes to the wire to develop the cordon. This is the next step. Any shoots developing low on the trunk should be rubbed off when they are young because uh, it's very easy to do this when they are young. Suckers arising from the ground should be removed and any grape clusters developing on the canes should be removed at bloom time. So I don't know how well you can see, but this is a cluster that is being formed right here. And we have a second clusters, of course, at the beginning of their development that is forming right here. We need to remove them to help the vine to establish a better root system. And um, this will provide a better longevity of our grapes. So during the second dormant season and the third growing season, we continue establishing the cordons we need to select the best lateral shoots to form the cordon based upon the position of the shoot, the vigor, and the shoot health. We need to prune back any lateral shoots developing of the one-year-old canes to a single bud. So uh, here is an example. This is one-year-old cane before pruning, and we need to cut it right here and our next crop and next shoot will develop from this bud and the crop will be formed on there. So during the growing season, if the vines is good vigor, they can be allowed to carry a partial crop, but we need to continue rubbing off any shoots that are developing uh, low on the trunk and remove any suckers developing from the ground. So now we grew our grapes for uh, three seasons and um, uh, during the uh, next season, they're um, kind of becoming uh, already well established. And um, for mature vines, uh, we're practicing um, this balanced pruning theory. Um, this um, system uh, is being practiced to maintain a good balance between the vegetative growth and your crop every year. The amount of the previous year's cane growth, which is one year old canes, determines how many buds you need to retain for the current production year. That's why we measure the amount that we cut down uh, every uh, during every uh, dormant season. And a base number of buds to retain for the first pound of pruning wood has been established for various cultivars based on their inherent vine vigor and production characteristics. And we address that we are having different growing habits, different species with different characteristics. So uh, all those, um, all this information has been established. 
So co to compensate for pine vigor, additional buds are retained for each additional pound of pruning wood that is removed up to a maximum of four pounds. So those are some major principles. And uh, based upon the weight of the one-year-old trimmings, uh, we need to determine the number of buds that we're going to retain per vine each year. And according to the balance pruning, we need to retain 30 buds for the first pound of uh, pruning wood that we get uh, to a, from a vine. And we need to retain 10 additional buds for an additional pound of pruning wood uh, for this plant. And we can go up to um, retaining uh, like four um, buds that equal uh, to four uh, pounds of pruning wood. And this number is like uh, 60 buds per plant is the maximum number that we can retain. Um, 30 plus 10 uh, balance pruning is applied to uh, moderately vigorous cultivars in general. And they could be uh, American, French American, uh, or just French uh, or European grapes as well. And um, we have um, the other theory, 20 plus 10 uh, balance pruning method is being applied for high vigor um, cultivars. And those are mainly belonging uh, to Vitis vinifera or European grapes. So removing any extra buds uh, is needed to obtain the desired bud number for the vigor of the vine each year. And um, on these images, I just uh, wanted to um, highlight how the high cordon single curtain training system might look uh, shortly after pruning, after the dormant pruning. You can see those spurs that we have left along the cordon and uh, the early shoot development uh, has already started on this vine. And this is later in the season when all of those shoots have grown and they are reaching uh, the ground. So high cordon single curtain training system. And the second system uh, that I wanted to address, this is the vertical shoot positioning system uh, with our medium low cordon and with our seven spurs on each side, on each cordon, and with two uh, butts per spur, uh, we're looking at um, about uh, 30 buds per vine uh, for this for this plant. And here is um, during dormancy, just prior to uh, dormant pruning. So we're having those seven spurs on each side and the shoes, two shoots that grew last season and then produced our fruit. So we're going to uh, remove um, most of this and train the spur uh, to only two buds. Okay, and um, just um, wanted to share with you that we're currently looking and evaluating uh, vine development on a relatively new training system that is a modification of the vertical shoot positioning system. This is uh, called like um, divided canopy um, positioning, vertical positioning system. Um, and it has been developed by a grower in Texas and uh, the name of the gentleman is Watson. So this is the Watson system uh, that provides um, or facilitates a lot of um, uh, operations in the vineyard and also provides for better air movement, for better uh, spray, spray penetration and for ease in um, thinning our shoots, thinning our clusters when needed, and harvesting the crop. And with the last slide, I just wanted to uh, let you probably enjoy some of the crop on the Watson system. This is 94% Vitis vinifera pierces disease resistant grape that we got from the University of Davis, California. And this is a um, representation of our crop uh, in the previous season. With that, thank you for your attention and uh, you can take any questions you may have.